So I have four great films for your cinematic elevation today. Hi, my name's Christine L. Conroy. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fluff, a channel for women over 50 who are getting happy and growing younger. So I have some great fluff for you today and I'm sticking to the theme of uh, last week really where I a uh, film and strengths because last week I recommended that you watch the Brené Brown A Call to Courage which lots of you did and have already emailed me about how much you enjoyed it so if you haven't watched that uh, go back I'll leave a link here and um, and watch that but I do have four fantastic films for you as I say, sticking with the theme of strength, strengths. Now, if you remember, you may not remember, but the director of the VIA Institute of Character Strengths is uh, Dr. Ryan Nemick. And um, I think I've actually got one of his videos in my recommended videos in the playlist section. Um, so yeah, he's the director of uh, the Institute on Character Strengths. And for the last 10 years, he's compiled a list for his Positive Psychology Movie Awards and he's written a book I think it's called Positive Psychology at the Movies I've left a link on one of the other um, videos about that I'll leave it down below again but um, he combs through the most well not just the most popular films but some of the more obscure ones too to choose films with important positive psychology themes or what he calls just for your cinematic elevation. Now, by that, he's talking about how films can create a stronger society and not only make us feel good, but also help us to be better people. So, what a task that is <laughs> to go on through and watch all of these films. But he's come up with, I think there are about 20 or 21 in the 2018 awards and I'll leave the list below but I've chosen four of them now feel good in terms of happy clappy type movies is, is not quite right it's a little bit misleading that because the first one that won the award for morality I spent the whole time sobbing through it but don't let that put you off because um, I think I may have mentioned I can cry at two minute advertisements so um yeah don't go by that you probably will need the tissues though um it's called the children act and it's an important film that offers a, a variety of moral dilemmas so it's a good film to get you talking or thinking and one dilemma surrounds the judge who is played by the lovely fabulous emma thompson who is racing against the clock to determine the fate of a Jehovah's Witness teenage boy. Now, I'm guessing you can imagine what I'm going to say next. So he needs a life-saving blood transfusion. And this, um, this dilemma stretches her life and her already fractured marriage to breaking point. And this decision leads to further dilemmas in regards to the interaction between the judge and the boy himself. So lots of interesting relationships going on there, twists and turns. So it's not just about um, Jehovah's Witnesses and blood transfusions. Um, there's a lot more intricately woven relationships going on. So it's a great film to watch. Uh, as I say, not necessarily a feel-good film, but certainly a film that's going to get you thinking um, about these dilemmas. So, uh, as I said already, I've only chosen four, and I've watched three of these. I'll tell you the one I haven't watched in a second. So the award for teamwork, and the teamwork's one of our strengths, goes to Operation Finale. Now, I watched this great film, such a fabulous story, a true story about the capture of Adolf Eichmann, who was the only Holocaust mastermind criminal to escape alive and avoid the Nuremberg trials. 
uh, post World War II. So that's the theme of this film. But the film depicts the incredible capture of Eichmann by a team of secret agents who secretly kidnap him and then um, keep him secure and alive and then have to secretly fly him back to Israel to stand trial. So it's an amazing feat. And the teamwork and planning amidst uh, such enormous risk and pressure is central to the film. So, and all of these, by the way, are great films to watch without these things in mind, but it adds a real cool twist to things when you're watching them with spotting strengths in characters um, in mind. Uh, obviously, uh, Ryan Nemec's done this for us. Uh, this has had the award for teamwork, and you can see why when you watch the film. Okay, a little bit more... Um, not happy clappy, because it isn't uplifting, shall I say. But that operation finale um, is gives you great satisfaction, let's put it that way. So the next one is a documentary uh, called Won't You Be My Neighbour. Now, I've chosen these films because I think they're particularly interesting to women over 50. The Children Act, um, The Judge and Her Marriage Waking Up and all, uh, Breaking Up and so on could have uh, resonance with you. Operation Finale about World War II and, and all of that story is interesting to us. And this one, Won't You Be My Neighbour, was interesting to me because this chap seems a fascinating person in terms of child development. But I'd never heard of him, I'm ashamed to say. Now, am I the only one in the UK? UK viewers, if you've heard of this man or not, tell me. But certainly... Um, my viewers from the US, please tell me what your memories are of this man and his programme. I'd love to know. It's called, it's a documentary called Won't You Be My Neighbour? And it's about the life and guiding philosophy of a chap called Fred Rogers, who was an American iconic children's television host way back when. He hosted a programme called Mr Rogers' Neighbourhood, which apparently ran for 31 seasons, which is 912 episodes, so it was clearly incredibly popular. Now, this documentary itself is claimed to be one of the best documentaries ever made. So it's interesting to watch, and as I say, I can vouch for it because I've watched it. So Rogers infused, apparently, joy, curiosity and love, these are all our strengths, in the hearts of countless children. Not only is the pleasurable type of happiness and smiles and so on and laughter apparent in this, but also the more meaningful ones of joy and openness that comes from, and this is incredibly radical, because we're talking about the early 60s, I think, when these first started, um, the inclusion of people with disabilities, the inclusion of people um, with races different from your own, all included, he included all of these in his programmes. So as I say, quite radical at that time. And uh, as a positive role, he apparently said, um, what is essential in life is invisible to the eye. Now, I must warn you again, there is a particular scene with a um, disabled, a child in a wheelchair that was really going to pull at the heartstrings, uh, but in a lovely way but you're probably going to need the tissues for this too. Something I liked that he said was that love or the lack of it is the root of everything. Um, yeah, if you know who this man was, then you'll really enjoy this documentary. And if you don't know who he was, you'll still enjoy it. In terms of, I say, in terms of child development and his thinking about children, because he even on his show covered uh, subject matter such as death, and um, divorce with children, you know, all the kinds of things that we'd worry about how, how we were going to tell the children, he did all that time ago in, in such a great way. So it's interesting to watch for that. And now the drum roll, please. The best positive psychology film goes to Mary Poppins Returns. Now, and I, I didn't go to watch this on purpose because I have fond memories of Mary Poppins and I wanted to uh, listen to the reviews first because I didn't, you know, I want to preserve those memories of my Mary Poppins. And sometimes I think when they redo these things, that can change a little bit. However, I am going to watch it. It's on Amazon. I think all of these, apart from um, Won't You Be My Neighbour, are on Amazon 
and I think that one's on Netflix. So I'm going to watch uh, Mary Poppins Return because Ryan says that there are a wide range of positive and uplifting messages in this film, in the lyrics of the songs and the central storyline with core themes including the importance of having an optimistic mindset. We've talked about that on Happy Stuff and Fluff. Trusting in children, which is a great one. And looking for a light to guide you. Reminding yourself that everything is possible. I should have worn that other t-shirt. shouldn't tell when I was doing this because that says everything is possible. I should have thought. Anyway, um, yeah, reminding yourself that everything is possible, including the impossible, and also that the view of death has gone, but not forgotten, and nothing is gone forever. So that could be a great one for you to um, sit down and watch with your grandchildren, or just on your own, but with those thoughts in mind, looking at strengths with the information I've just given you. Um, so even if you've watched all of these films, or only some of these films, watch them again with a different eye, looking at strengths and see if you can um, pull anything out. I hope you enjoy them. I enjoyed them all in different for different reasons. And as I say, there are some 20 or 21, so I will leave the list to that down below. Okay, so that's it for a while for films about films. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Um, let me know, as usual, what you thought about all of those things, but especially you guys from the US, if you know Fred Rogers and remember his programs, please tell me about them in the comments box. I'd look forward to that. Okay, until the next time, remember that on the Happy Stuff and Fluff, we are getting happy and growing younger. See you next time. Bye-bye.